it's something people, I guess, assume that incorrectly that somehow when you're a, a born again Christian or that you walk with God that every day is going to be sunny and every day is going to be sunshine. And I'm not sure exactly why people pick that up or assume that because frankly when I got saved I was told, you know, in the world you shall have tribulation but be a good cheer I've overcome the world. And if they so persecuted the Son of Man, likewise they would do so to us. So in my life I fully expected it to be harder than what most people presume it to be when they say it's kind of like a bed of roses and they kind of go forward. Or like they're always claiming and exclaiming and singing these songs of victory that sometimes I wonder if we get into detail how real are we about our daily struggles. I know for me, Today, I'm struggling. You know, I, I've already blown it. <laughs> I've already found myself in back pain and just aches and challenges that I say to myself, well, I don't feel like it. I don't want to do this now, Lord. I would rather just postpone it. Put it off. Wait till tomorrow sleep on it. <laughs> and you know what? That's not what a Christian is. A Christian, you simply fall down, get back up, keep going. And when you don't feel like it, that's the best time to do it. Because when you don't want to, and you do, that's a step of faith. And for me, it's always challenging to do that. But it's become a habit that the reality of knowing that God is with me, irregardless of what I may experience, is what keeps me going every day. So no matter what happens, I just turn it back to Him and say, Oh well, Lord, you know, you know me better than me, and I just pray that you will continue to take me all the way to one day see you face to face, and then you embrace me and love me, as I love you. He hath acquainted himself with my beaten path. When he has searched me out, I shall come out shining. Job 23.10 Faith grows amid storms. Just four words, but oh how full of import to the soul who has been in the storms. Faith is that God-given faculty which, when exercised, brings the unseen into plain view, and by which the impossible things are made possible. It deals with the supernaturals. But it grows amid storms. That is where there are disturbances in the spiritual atmosphere. Storms are caused by the conflicts of elements, and the storms of the spiritual world are conflicts with hostile elements. In such an atmosphere, faith finds its most productive soil. In such an element, it comes more quickly to full fruition. The staunchest tree is not found in the shelter of the forest, but out in the open where the winds from every quarter beat upon it and bend and twist it until it becomes a giant in stature. This is the tree which the mechanic wants his tools made of, and the craftsman seeks the wood which is like iron. So in the spiritual world, when you see a giant, remember the road you must travel to come up to his side is not a long the sunny lane with wildflowers ever bloom, but a steep, rocky, narrow pathway where the blasts of hell will almost blow you off your feet, where the sharp rocks cut the flesh, where the projecting thorns scratch the brow, and the venomous beasts hiss on every side. It is a pathway of sorrow and joy, of suffering and healing balm, of tears and smiles, of trials and victories, of conflicts and triumphs, of hardships and perils and buffetings, of persecutions and misunderstandings, of troubles and distresses, through all of which we are made more than conquerors through Him who loved us. 
amid storms, right in the midst where it is fiercest, you may shrink back from the ordeal of a fierce storm of trial, but go in. God is there. He's there to meet you in the center of all your trials and to whisper his secrets, which he will make you come forth with a shining face and an indomitable faith that all the demons of hell shall never afterwards cause to waver. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, at some point in time, every man comes to a conflict where he is beaten and smashed and crushed and whooshed and mushed and placed into a position where he has to determine for himself what he will do. Whether he will go on with God or whether he will just be beaten back and languish or languor in his own self-pity and be a casualty rather than a convert to what God wants to convince us of, which is the very simple fact that we will persevere and overcome if we just keep going. You just keep going. It's pretty simple in that way. Because your feelings will change just as easily as it takes sugar to hit your system or as easily as you decide to just think about something else. Your faith can be built up just as quickly as you begin to recognize how God has loved you and died for you and accomplished so much in your past life that in your present He is going to confirm your footsteps every step of the way. So you would not turn to the left or the right. For me, sometimes I just get a sense of humor and I just think, boy, Lord, if there was a way to frustrate grace, I would have done it. And I thank you that you have never left me nor forsaken me. And that in all my ways, in all that I've succeeded in and all that I've failed, in all that you have done throughout my life, you are the one that I turn to, and you're the only one that I know. And you know, when we come to that place in our faith and our walk, we don't see ourselves as more righteous than others. In fact, we claim and make that bold statement that Paul said, God forgive me, the chiefest of sinners. Because we realize just how much the righteousness of God has been placed in us. And His perfection is accomplished through His mercy, His grace, His forgiveness, His kindness, and His tenderness, and the willingness to take someone like you and me and bring us to the day of salvation when we will stand before Him perfected. I can't wait. Can you? <laughs>